Hello world, it's John Pinto, your roving realtor, Bon Vivant video blogger, and I am here with Bob Johnson, the guru of Home Guard Home <laughs> Warranty. How are you, Bob? I'm fine today, John. You doing well today? I'm doing very well, especially since I figured out that when I put on my headphones, uh, it will not only help my audio if I put on the headphones, but I also plug it into my computer. Do I sound better always, now? That you, you sound wonderful now. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I'm impressed with your living room. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I inherited it from uh, Randolph Hearst. <laughs> there you go. He had it moved from uh, Hearst Castle. Thank you. And Raphael, how are you today? I'm doing great, guys. Thank you once again for having us. Very good. Are you uh, going to pick up anything in particular at Whole Foods uh, today, Napa? I'm not. I'm not. I was actually around, uh, uh, just around the offices here in Napa, and I stopped here for the meeting. <laughs> ah, okay. Very good. Well, that's a good spot over there. So today, we're let's talk a little bit about electrical. I'll give you some of my little war story references. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I lived in Negley Park over on South 14th Street on a house that was built in 1906 and on South 16th Street on a house that was built in 1926. And I used to sell a lot of properties in downtown San Jose, still do occasionally, but uh, uh, lots and lots and lots of them. And we always mm -hmm. had the issue of, quote unquote, knob and tube wiring, which mm -hmm. came up. And then I would also venture into Almaden Valley and uh, we would have that Vietnam War era electrical that was using aluminum instead aluminum. of copper, which was very interesting because I never observed that there was any problems with them, but it was the lawsuit du jour that you didn't disclose or you sold us a house with aluminum wiring rather than copper wiring. And of course, you know, all hell could break loose and the house could burn down at any minute. Nothing mm -hmm. ever happened, but who cares if a lawsuit is filed? Sure. And, you know, I, I didn't see those happening too often, but uh, you did hear about them when we were at our realtor meetings. Mm -hmm. So let's just talk about uh, electrical in general, but specifically, knob and tube wiring, that aluminum wiring, and what kind of claims and issues do you see coming up as part of your home warranty claims? Well, great question because uh, yes, we don't see it as much anymore because of the dates you just mentioned of how, how old those homes are um, to be able to have those. But I do remember the issues of the aluminum wiring and the stretching that would go on and therefore connectivity problems, especially at the outlets um, was an issue. And, and warranty companies would come out and, and under electrical uh, do replace the outlets and, and make sure the connections are proper so that the homeowner does have their power back. Uh, the knob and tube, um, this is a, a great example of, of why agents, uh, homeowners, anyone listening to our videos here you want to get your upgraded policies because these upgrades, modifications that need to be done uh, when you run into the electrical that is that old um, can be costly. Warranty companies in general do not rewire homes. So if we do find out a problem, we're only going to repair that section. But if the technician says to a warranty company, uh, well, I'm sorry, the only way to take care of this problem is we really need to rewire the whole house. That's not going to fall under a home warranty because that is one exclusion that all warranty companies that I'm aware of um, have. Um, I've worked for multiple warranty companies and haven't had one that covers rewiring the house. Uh, I do have an interesting story, though, and, and this ties into um, getting a good home inspector. Uh, because we did have a situation where John on one of those older homes uh, aged pretty close to what you were talking about, the seller had done an addition onto their home. They just put a little, uh, I'll say a rumpus room addition onto the house. And the buyer chose not to get any home inspection. And so we, um, we had a warranty and the buyer moved in 
And unfortunately, when they tried to use all the sockets in that extension uh, room, they kept blowing the breaker. And so we sent out an electrician and they went up and found out that the person who did the addition, I don't wanna impugn anybody, <laughs> the person who did the addition actually had taken an extension cord and tied in to the knob and tube electrical from the main house. And it was an extension cord that ran to the outlets of the addition. And so this is a huge problem that's not to any code at any time in, in my knowledge. And so that whole room needed to be rewired uh, to be done up to code and done correctly. Uh, would that have been discovered under a normal home inspection? Absolutely, it would have. The, the inspector would have just put his head up into that attic and found the extension cord spliced into that knob and tube and would have immediately put up a red flag for all the parties. Okay, so with uh, uh, electrical, uh, could you impart to us the difference between the coverage in your basic uh, policy and your total protection plan? And do you need to add any optional coverages to make sure that you're properly covered on the electrical? The beauty of the electrical, um, because warranty companies, all of us in our standard policies cover the systems and appliances and electrical system would be included in that. And we're covering, um, you know, the, the lights, the outlets, the switches. Uh, like I said, we don't rewire the home, but all of the basics are pretty covered. We're getting the upgraded plans is a smart idea is because if you again have to do a code upgrade, let's say to the breaker box, we hadn't touched on that part, but obviously that's part of the electrical and you might have to do an upgrade to that or a modification to that breaker um, if the client's having an issue. And by having the upgraded plans, um, whether it be an advantage plan or total protection plan with HomeGuard, you're gonna have the additional coverage to take care of the breaker box uh, that might need to be uh, upgraded to address the issue that the client's having. Uh, you might have no problem at all with the outlets, but you're having a problem now with the actual breaker system. Every now and then we see issues like reverse polarity coming up and especially now where people are sheltering in place uh, they're uh, doing high-speed internet, they're homeschooling, uh, you know, you have a lot more demands on your uh, electrical system at home. Uh, is that causing any kind of issues to come up, any uh, failures in any way that we weren't seeing before? I haven't experienced any of those at this point. I think the closest thing that we've had is we'll get into a home and find out that they have plugged a couple power strips um, on top of each other to try to get enough plugs to handle the extra uh, appliances, I'll say, uh, that you might be referring to now that we're sheltering in place. And they're blowing a circuit because they're trying to put too much load onto that specific um, circuit. And so there's really nothing wrong with the electrical at that point. They're just overloading it. So we've had to educate homeowners that, hey, don't, don't put a power strip on top of a power strip because you're trying to draw too much power out of, of one um, circuit. You really need to disperse this across a couple breakers and then you won't have the problem. So one surge protector per receptacle or one surge protector per pair of receptacles. Yeah, when, when you go into a home and you see one plugged in and it has four separate now uh, outlets off that one, but they plug another one into that one and get another four. So they basically created two into 10 mm -hmm. and ask us, why is the breaker keep tripping? Mm. Okay, so for a simple, 
non-electrician person like me, uh, you know, you usually have a, a two ganger, you know, two yes. receptacles. Yeah. Uh, would it be within the acceptable standard of practice to put in one surge protector in each of those two receptacles? Well, you run the risk of, of, of blowing the circuit depending on, on the appliances or, or the systems okay. you're running out of there and what they're pulling. So the um, answer is but, be safer with one surge protector. Yes. And, okay. and it's, uh, again, there, there's a case by case on those kind of situations, but this is a topic that we try to get into when a claim is made to find out what specifically is going on so we can help the client as soon as possible. Uh, because in waiting 24 hours to get a technician out there and finding out that the simple answer was just <laughs> move that one surge protector away <laughs> and the breaker will, will stop uh, tripping on you and losing power for that bedroom or that office uh, is the short answer. Is there an option where they could just have you stay in the third bedroom 24 yeah, seven. Right. So you could be the answer man all the time, or do they just have to call you on your cell phone? Uh, they just got to give us a call. My <laughs> wife wouldn't like the idea of me being gone that much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell that you haven't been married for 47 years like me. Oh, uh, well, I'm not 47, <laughs> but I am 33. 33. That's pretty good. The, old man, years, the new yeah. band, Matt, that's 80 years of marriage. Hey, I would, we're going to have to uh, toast to that. They're going to throw us out of California for that. <laughs> Listen carefully, Raphael. Listen carefully. That's right. You're not married yet, are you, Raphael? I'm not. I'm not, but I'm taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, uh, certainly you could see where the electrical could be another rabbit hole that we uh, go down. So I, I see your cell phone in the background, Bob, if people want to call you and find out more about. Uh, Home Guard Home Warranty, uh, please reiterate that phone number. Yep, my cell phone's over my right shoulder. It's 707 454 6950. Excellent. And uh, Raphael, if uh, people want to contact you for roof termite home inspections or any information, how do they contact you? Absolutely. You guys can either call me or you can text me at 707 616 8762, or you can email me at rbetances at homeguard.com. That's R, but Tans is my last name, at homeguard.com. Excellent, gentlemen. Well, thank you for imparting all of that information about electrical systems. Thank you all for tuning in, and we will see you on the next page.